All right, brothers, this thing has stopped, man. So I uh, had to start all over again. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, and uh, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone of Ruel, peace and blessings and salutation to the whole for the elect, the Bayah, Dawadah, the house of David. All right, so let's start back in the beginning where we were and all uh, the lesson in the beginning. All right, the lesson in the beginning. Let's go back to it. All right, the lesson in the beginning, right? All right, so here it was. This is uh, Proverbs 15 and 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and good. Right, see, the eyes of the Lord are beholding, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good, man. So there's a lot of evilness going on here in this world, man as well there's a lot of uh wickedness going on in babylon man all right and the lord is going to destroy this place man the lord going to take this place out and he's going to deliver the elect of these people here on this side man okay now you got them so-called jews who may be israelites as well man okay you know some of them, not all of them, some of them. All right? And it says this right here. Oh, whew. let's jump to verse 6. Oh, yeah, let's jump to verse 6. It says, in the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues, in the revenues of the wicked is troubled. See, in the revenues of the wicked is troubled, man. Okay? You see, let's jump down to verse uh, seven real quick. It says, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. See, the lips, the, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, man. And that's what we come out here to do, disperse knowledge. And what is the knowledge that we're dispersing? Who are the people who are, are, are lost, okay? The ones who are on this sign right here. But mainly we're speaking out to the elect and telling them to come back and repent to the heavenly father and his son, man. Repentance, man. Repentance and patience, man. Repent and be patient. Ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because what Yahweh Shai said. He said, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. All right, let's get that. Let's bring that out real quick. All right, let's go to that real quick. This is when Yahweh Shai first uh, started his ministry. Matthew 3 and 2, it says, And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now let's read this here. Let's jump down to uh, Matthew 1 and 15. It says, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Right, repent ye, and believe the gospel, man. And the gospel is the good news. That's what we come with on a week in and week out basis. The good news. The gospel, man. Brothers is out here teaching on the highways and byways daily. All right. Brothers doing it daily throughout the week. You know. Trying to trying to balance their life out this, uh, in this damn wicked society, man. All right. You got to go to work for Esau. Okay. You got other things that come at you, man. So it's like a balance, man. It's like a balance here. You know? So you have to balance yourself out. But it says, let's read verse 7 again. It says, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart, see, the mind of fools doeth not so. Right. But the mind of fools doeth not so, man. A mind of a fool is not going to come out here, or, or a fool is not going to come out here and going to tell you that America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, man. That Babylon is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. Fool's not going to do that, man. He's living in his day-to-day -day life being a fool, man. Being foolish, being unwise. Not having any knowledge and understanding and wisdom of what the things that's going to happen here in this place, man. Knowing that nothing lasts forever, man. Nothing lasts forever. Okay? Because, what? It, hey, listen, let's go to it, man. Let's go to 2 Ezra, the ninth chapter. Let's go to 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, man. 
Second Ezra is ninth, the ninth chapter, and it says, um, verse five, it says, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end. See, like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, man. Everything has a beginning and everything has an end. So what makes you think that this place is going to go on forever? But see, in the elite's minds, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Ibrahimers, the DuPonts, the Gettys, the banking families, the top banking families of this world who control this society by the news media, all right, by the newspapers, okay, and by so on and so forth, man, all right, they control this society and brain, and, and what you consider brainwashing, brainwashing the people, what you can consider, all right, it's called fear mongering. A lot of things, a lot of things that you see on TV is fear mongering. Like they have this movie called They Live. Every all the brothers know about the movie They Live. All right, the movie They Live is where this guy, right, he put the glasses on, right, and he can see everything going on, man. He can literally see all the wickedness going on, while everybody else is walking zombies, zombified as hell, man. All right, zombified as hell. Okay, and there's plenty of other movies out there, man. There's plenty of other movies out there. All right, it says, For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, right? And the end is manifest. We see the things that are going on in the news, you see the things that are going on around the world, man. Uproars of the people. All right, how these kings, which these modern day kings, are, are, are actually speaking up against one another, man puffing their chests out against one another. All right? Okay? Jocking for power, so to speak, man. All right? Jocking for power. You know? So all these things are going on, man. While a lot of people just don't pay attention because they don't have the attention span to pay attention because of everything is going on in this world, man. Everything that's going on in this society, man. All right, bread and circuses, man. That's what this place is all about, bread and circuses. That's why it's ancient Rome all over again. This is Rome all over again, man. Bread and circuses, man. Football, basketball, hockey, UFC, boxing. All of these things are nothing but bread and circuses to keep the minds of the people asleep while everything that's going on behind the scenes is being put together. Right? Like that RFID microchip, the mark of the beast, man. That's all being put together. It's all it's all coming together in the minds of the, in the minds and in the eyes of the elites, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Ibenheimers, the DuPonts, the Gettys. See, their whole goal is is to have a new world order. But little do they know is the real new world order is when we come into power. All right, when we come into power is the real new world order. When Yahweh Shai returns is the real new world order going to begin. Because see, their new world order, it consists of a, of a mass amount of wickedness, man. Mass amount of wickedness. But they're going to have to battle the Lord when he comes back. They're going to have to battle Yahweh Shai when he comes back, man. And that's not something they want to battle. That's why That's why you see in the news, they said they've seen 144... Uh, so-called UFOs, which are really chariots in the Bible. But UFOs, man, they're afraid of the UFOs. Okay, they're afraid of the chariots, man. Matter of fact, I have a scripture in Amos real quick. You know, I have a scripture in Amos. Let me get it. In the book of Amos. Okay, let's just go in here. Okay. Cause they, they they've been seeing the chariots a whole lot, man. They've been knowing the chariots were out here, man. They think that they think they try to pull a wall over on the men of the Lord's eyes. Now nah, we knew the chariots been out here too, okay. But the people they don't believe it. All right, see the people just think it's some type of damn hoax or something to that, to that nature, man. But it's not no hoax, okay. It's not a hoax. All right, so let's go to Amos real quick.
Ooh, let's see if it's in here. Let me see where it's at. All right, hold on, brothers. I gotta find it. I know it's in the book of Amos. It's in here, man. I gotta find it. It's in here. It's, uh... Let me just put it in. Hold on. Oh no, Slakia. I think it's uh Let's try Zachariah real quick. I think it might be Zachariah. I know where it's the chariots enter into the house of the thieves. I think that is in uh Let me see if I can find it, man. I'm trying to look for it, brothers. I know it's entered into the house of the thief. I don't. I know it's the chariots. I forgot what the scripture was, but I think it's in. The, it's got to be in the book of Amos. Uh, anyway, it'll come back to me. But um, yeah, pretty much is man that yeah they, the chariots are going to enter into the house of the thief, man. And the house of the thief is talking about Esau. All right, that's the house of the thief. Okay, and when the when they see the chariots, because like I said, like I stated before, I started looking for the scripture, uh, is that they've been seeing a lot of chariots, man, and they know the chariots are out here anyway. Okay, and they know things is gonna happen, and once it's time to go to battle with the chariots and go to battle with uh, Yahweh Shai and the angels, man, they're not gonna be able to prevail. That's why they're creating all these uh, down in Area 51 and things of that nature. In Area 52, stealth mode planes and so on and so forth to try to do battle with the chariots, try to do battle with the angels, man, and Yahweh Shai. But they're not going to prevail. They're going to ultimately lose, man. They're going to ultimately lose. Okay? Oh, 
right. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think it is Zachariah. Yeah, it's Zachariah 5. Yeah, I was right. All right, I said Amos, but it's Zachariah 5. Okay, Zachariah 5 and uh, Zechariah 5 and 3. It says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that uh, uh, stealeth shall be cut off as every as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on this side according, according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swears falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. All right, so there you go. Hey, so that's talking about the chariots, man. All right, that's talking about the angels. All right, and them sealing, and, and, and then coming and just dropping straight fire on this place, man. All right, because Yahweh Shai said, what if it be if I'd already be kindled, right? Let's get that. Yahweh Shai said this in Luke 12 and 49. It says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled, right? What will I if it already be kindled? So fire is going to be set on this earth, and that's going to be by the missiles, and ICBM missiles that's going to drop down here on this place as well. And then more, more concentrated fire, right, coming out of the angels, coming from the angels out of the midst of those chariots, man. All right? Straight fire dropping down, man. All right? So it's going to be a beautiful day, man. It's going to be extremely beautiful, man. All right? That's going to be a beautiful time, man. All right, and it's only, hey, listen, that's why we seeking a new heaven and a new earth, man. That's our whole, that's, our, that's hey, listen, we're out here prophesying against the downfall of this uh, place, which is Babylon, all right? Okay, matter of fact, let's give Jeremiah 28 and 8. Let's get Jeremiah 28 and 8, because this is our whole job. And then I'm going to go to Romans 12. So let's get Jeremiah 28 and 8. This is Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. <laughs> it says, uh, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right? right that's right it says <laughs> people off the hook man people are people are off the hook all right let's read this again jeremiah 28 and 8 man. it says the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence that's right so we're prophesying against this kingdom man because this, uh, Babylon or America, a.k.a. America, is what you consider a great kingdom, right? You can consider this a great kingdom. And so we prophesying against this place, man. On a daily, brothers is prophesying against this place, man. They say, hey, listen, how the Lord going to destroy this place? How the Lord going to take this place out? How he going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel, man? Okay? See, that's our whole job, man. That's the job of a prophet, man, is to come out here and speak the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. All right, because hey, the scriptures say, if we speak not according to this word, there is no light in them, man. All right, let's read this and then I'll go get that. And then, I'll, as a matter of fact, I'll get the Romans and then I'll go get that. Verse nine, it says, the prophet which prophesieth of peace 
when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known uh, that the Lord have truly sent him. Then he, hey, you know, he'd be truly been sent, man. All right, so let's get Romans 11, uh, Romans 12 and 1. Let's get Romans 12, let's get Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1 said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, which means beg you, brethren, by the mercies of our power, or the heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the heavenly Father, which is your reasonable service, right? Which is our reasonable service, man? It says, and not be conformed to this world, right? And not be conformed to this world, right? So your mind got to be, how can I say? Your mind got to be tight, man. All right? You got to keep your mind like in, like you see certain things go out here, go on in this world out here, man. And you try to, con you try to compose or contain your composure, right? Okay? Because you, you, you feel you have the right to say something. But you know, hey, man, if you say something, these people out here are all bugged out anyway, man. Their minds, are, they're not in their right state of mind, man. They're just walking zombies, man. All right? They're walking zombies. You see? You got the drugs out here. The drugs is just destroying their minds. Chemicals. Nothing but chemicals, man. Okay? You go to these hospitals and get all these chemicals. Go get this marijuana and all that. Ain't nothing but chemicals, man. Okay? And it's destroying him. It's destroying. It's killing him, man. All right, methamphetamines and so on and so forth. All that shit is doing nothing but destroying you, man. All right, and they like it so. Okay, talking about the elites, they like it so. Cause it's much more easier for them to weed out the ones they keep. And weed out the ones, and the weed out the ones they want to keep, and the ones they want to get rid of. All right, that's why they got concentration camps set up, martial law, all these things ready to go, man. Okay, depopulation, man. Depopulation. All those things are going on in front of these people's faces, but they have no clue because their eyes are not open because they're just zombified. They walk in. The walking dead, man. Literally the walking dead. All right? Okay? They worry about what goddamn new rapper gonna drop a new album out. All right? Okay? Or what other biscuit head nigga is gonna come up with a movie, man? All right? That's all they worried about, man. All right? Who got the latest, hottest album? Okay, <laughs> you see, that's what they worried about. But it says, but it says, verse two. It says, and be not and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High, right? And perfect will of the Heavenly Father, man. So we got to be renewed in our mind, transformed, all right, okay, and prove that is good, okay, and prove that that is good, okay, okay, so yeah, hey, so let's go get this here in, uh, speak not according to this word. All right, here we go. Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. Right, it is because there's no light in them. So if you're not speaking according to this word, there's no light in you, man. All right, there's no light in you at all. You're just dead. Okay, you're dead. You're dead as hell. You're not speaking according to this word, man. To this truth, to this knowledge, to this understanding. All right, let's get this here. Let's get this here. Oracles.
All right, here it is right here. First Peter 4 and 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the heavenly father. If any man minister, let him do it as his ability, which the most high giveth, that the heavenly father in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shadi of Mashiach, to whom, the, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amon or Tawah. So guess what? So you got to speak the oracles of the heavenly father, man. All right? Now, what's the word oracles mean? Let's go to the word oracles. All right. Interlinear. Matter of fact, let's just get it in here. Ah. Ah, it's not working. Got the Wi-Fi over here, sucks. But yeah, so you got to speak according to the words of the Heavenly Father, man. According to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right? That's what you got to speak unto, man. Okay? You got to speak unto that. And what we're speaking of, we're prophesying against this kingdom, about the downfall of it, about the destruction of it. All right? Speaking of oracles of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh by Yahweh Shai and his son. All right? And we're letting you know that, guess what, man? Babylon is going to come to an end. This place is going to come to an end, man. Okay? This place is going to ultimately come to an end. And deliverance is going to be for the elect only. All right? And the elect only. That's it. Okay? That's what's going to happen, man. And there's no other way about this, man. Okay? There's no other way about this. So let's go here. Let's go here real quick. Let's go to Revelation 18. Because I've been getting on a destruction. Actually, in fact, before we go there, let's go into the Apocrypha, man. Before we go there, let's go into the Apocrypha. Because I've been... Uh, Meditating my mind on this destruction lately, man. With this place being destroyed, man. Because I don't see America going on forever at all. Not, not, not one day in my mind, man. And then I, I, I come across people and they go, "Oh, man, this place gonna be going on forever and ever, man." And I'm looking at them with the side eye, like, "Man, you have no idea, man. You, you know, you, you, you have no idea about what's gonna happen, man." Okay. See, that's the, the pride of this world. Hey, you know, they like, oh, man, we going on forever. The puffed upness of this world, man. Okay? Pride goes, but the, uh, pride goes before destruction and a horty spirit before a fall. You see? So this is 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in, my, put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Right, so we're speaking the words of prophecy. Which the Lord has the Lord has put it in our mouth to speak it, man. All right. Okay, the Lord put it in our mouth to speak it. So it says, "Behold, speak down the uh, speak down in the ears of my people." Right, in the ears of my people are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Right. Those are the ones who we speaking, speaking to, man. Speak down in the ears of my people. The words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right, for they are faithful and true. So these words, these, this whole Bible that I hold in my hand right here, the Apocrypha, all of this is true, faithful and true, man. It's all going to come to pass. And we're in the latter end, man. We're in the latter end. All right? We're in the latter end of Esau's destruction. See, in his days are determined the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Job 14 and 5. All right? So he has a boundary set up to where prophecy uh, needs to take place. Okay? Which he, he's going to fulfill prophecy. He's the one to fulfill prophecy. Right? Because the Most High is using him to do it. And to bring in that RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. 
all right? And then ultimately, the end game is World War III. You got martial law, you got race riots, you got uh, uh, you got all types of other things that are uh, going to persist out here, man. Are going to happen, a famine, physical famine, right, which is uh, food, and then another, and then a famine of the word, man. A famine of the word, where they'll no longer be able to access the uh, the prophets who are standing out here teaching this truth. Okay, who are teaching this truth, man? They're no longer going to be able to get this. No longer going to be able to hear this knowledge, man. All right. So it says, fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity, which is unbelief, of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right, let, let not the incredulity, right? Which is the unbelief of these people. All right, don't let, don't worry about what they think about you, man, or what they, how they feel about you, man. Okay, you ain't gotta worry about none of that, man. Don't worry about what people say about you, how they feel about you, or whatever the case may be, man. You continue to keep doing what you do for the Heavenly Father, man. Cause this thing is all about Yahweh while Yahweh shy, all right? This word is all about Yahweh while Yahweh shy. These prophecies that are stated is all about Yahweh while Yahweh shy, man. Okay, it ain't about nothing else, man. It ain't about nobody's feelings or how they feel. We don't give a damn about how they feel, man. All right, we don't give a damn about how they feel, man. Cause the prophecies is what is what the Most High is gonna carry out, man. Okay. Only thing our job is to look for the elect, man, and work out our own salvation, man. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the scriptures say. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. So before you try to tell somebody and correct yourself uh, and correct them, you have to worry about yourself first as well. Okay. Okay. You got to check yourself too. The scriptures say, examine thyself. All right, so you gotta examine yourself, and then you gotta a, hey, and then you gotta uh, you know you gotta teach, man. Okay, but our job is to look for the elect and to prophesy the downfall of this place, man. Okay, because this place is is damn wicked as hell, man, and it has to go, man. This is Sodom and Gomorrah on steroids, man. America is Sodom and Gomorrah on steroids, man. Some serious serious steroids, man. Mixed in with everything else, man. All right, ancient Rome, which is which we know. Hey, listen, a lot of things. Uh, this is ain't this is Rome reincarnated all over again. All right, but way worse than ancient Rome. Okay, way worse than ancient Rome, man. Ancient Rome was very very pagan. There was a lot of things going on in ancient Rome, but this this is on steroids. America is on steroids of wickedness, man. <laughs> okay? They're on steroids of wickedness. This is at a high degree. On a high level, man. On a high, high level. Okay? On a high, high level. So let's get back into this. It says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. And this is 2nd Ezra 15, chapter 15, by the way. In verse number three it says fear not the imaginations against thee let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness right so whoever hey listen they all gonna die in their unfaithfulness man and they don't, hey if they don't believe what we saying okay which the heavenly father has said it let's go i'm gonna go to ezekiel the third chapter matter of fact the second chapter because our people are rebellious and the word rebellious means to make war against and that's what they do. When they see the prophets come out, they, oh man, them, them, them guys again, man, they out here with that same message again. With that same message. Hey, listen, the Lord is repetitive, man. The Lord is all about repetition. Repetition is the father of skill, man. So the Lord is very repetitive. And he'll keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. The same thing, the same thing. And that's the Heavenly Father using us to keep repeating it. Reputation, uh, 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 repetition, repetition, repetition. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. That's the Lord doing it through the men. All right? Because you got those same people that, oh man, these people, these guys again, these guys back out here again, they ain't getting nothing done the last time, but they back out here again. That's what our people think in their minds, man. That's what our people say in their minds when they walk away. All right? 
And then they'll see us out here again the next week and they'll say the same thing. And then they see us again the next week, they say the same thing. Because our people have no faith. They're faithless. They're not faith, they're not faith-based, but they're faithless, man. And that's why the Lord gonna have to do away with two-thirds of Israel, man. Because they are faithless, man. And when you don't have any faith, how can you do anything, man, without faith, man? Faith, the scriptures say in uh, Hebrews 11 and 1, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right? So you got to have faith, man. Okay? You got to have faith and patience. Because patience as well is a good thing. All right? To be patient is a good thing, man. Okay? Okay? So this is back in uh, 2nd Ezra 15. In verse number 4, it says, for, un for all the unfaithful should die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, say, if the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And as we see a lot of plagues coming upon this place, man, there's a lot of plagues going on here in Babylon. A lot of plagues, man. A lot of plagues. All right? A lot of plagues, man. Okay? Sword destruction. That ultimate sword is that ICBM missile that's going to be flying through the air. The glittering sword, man. That's going to be flying through the air, man. All right? Man, hey, that's going to be beautiful. That's going to be your pa, man. All right? That's going to be beautiful to know, hey, amen, to know that this place is going to be blown up, man. This place is going to be ashes, burnt to a crisp, man. To know you ain't going to have to worry about your enemies being over top of you no more, man. All right? Worry about them, what you call harassing you every day, man. Okay? And how we gonna be, how we gonna have our foot on the neck in the kingdom, man. How everything is gonna be ran in righteousness, man. How everything is gonna be beautiful, man. How everything is gonna be at your disposal when it comes, man. Hey, listen, you ain't even gotta, hey, the Lord already gonna know what you need, man. It's gonna be right there for you. Bow. That's something beautiful, man. We don't have that here on this side, man. We don't have that over here. But what we do have is faith. That's what we do have. But what we do have is faith and we have patience. Because those things, when they come together, that's like a force field that can never be broken. All right? That's like a force field that can't be penetrated. Unless, unless you're weak. That's all I can say. Unless you're weak, man. And you should never be weak-minded. All right? You should never be weak-minded. Man, you should always be praying. You know, if you fast, if you get a chance to fast, fast as possible. All right? Pray. You know? And keep your mind strong, man. Keep your mind in the scriptures as well, man. Try to read as much as you possibly can. Okay? Try to read as much as you possibly can, man. But back in here. Okay. It says, Behold, say of the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, the famine, death, and destruction. All right. Hey, we see. Hey, the Lord is not playing when he said death and destruction, man. And, and famines, man. There's famines going on in certain places, man, around the earth, man. Esau not going to tell you that. Hey, but the brothers we know. Esau not going to tell you that there's famines going on in certain places, man. All right? Esau not going to tell you how the dollar bill is falling. Matter of fact, how they trying to hold back, how they try, how now they talk about a hey, gold and silver, man. But the elites have all the gold and the silver, man. All right? How the paperback or the paper dollar bill, that garbage, all right? How hyperinflation and inflation is in this place, man. Everything is all about hyperinflation. All right, it's not because the food, it's not because the food is high, it's because the money is no good. All right, because the money's no good. All right, hey, 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 when the king, hey, hey, when a kingdom falls, it starts with its, uh, with its money, man. That's when a kingdom falls, because it's, because it's breaking down. Because, hey, you got to figure that money controls everything, man. Wealth controls everything. And it keeps a kingdom stable. 
are right along with laws, statutes, and commandments, which they don't imply into those here in America anyway. All right? The Heavenly Father's laws, statutes, and commandments, they don't apply the Bible. They make their own 3,000 ordinances and so, called, and so and so on and so forth. All right? America has more than 3,000 or possible ordinances that they have out, man. Okay? So this place is completely off, man. Completely off. The younger generation, they have no idea of what they even getting into or where they at with it. They don't understand because what they've been taught. In this world, you're taught bullshit. You're not taught the truth. You're not taught to understand what's real and what's not. You see what's on the TV and that's what you glorify. All right? But what you glorify is you glorifying BS, man. That's what you glorify, man. Straight up and down. Okay? You have to use your mind, man. That's why you have it. But see, they're not going to let you use your mind. What they're going to do is say, here, we're going to give you this. We're going to spoon feed you this. All right? And you eat this up and you run with this. Instead of coming to the true sources, right? Which is in front of you. Okay? So it says this. It says, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled, right? And their hurtful works are fulfilled. What is the hurtful works of America, man? What is the philosophies that they spread? Homosexuality is cool. Bestiality is cool. You can sleep with a damn animal, man. That's madness. You gonna marry a damn animal? That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. You had a woman on Facebook and went and got married to a dog. <laughs> That's bestiality. He's supposed to have a dog, have a dog pop and a woman, man. That's crazy. It's supposed to be man and woman. All right. But let's go, let's continue on, man. It says, therefore, say if the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things which they wickedly exercise themselves. Right? So there you go. It says, the wickedness have profanely committed, right? Neither will I suffer them in those things. Neither will I suffer them in those things. All right? So the prophets are out here speaking. The Lord is speaking again through the prophets and letting them know, okay, listen here, man. Listen here. We're going to, the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. Just like he sent, just like he sent Moses, Abraham, all right, Samuel, the Lord sends numerous Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos. Those are all prophets that the Lord sends, man, to give warning signs, man, to give you warning and let you know, hey, listen, man, if you don't get it together, we're going to destroy it, man. See, the Lord sends warnings first, man. The scriptures say, blow ye the trumpet. Hold on, man, let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. Let's go and get it here. Joel. Joel 2 and 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Right? And alarm means we're giving you a warning, letting you know that things are coming. Things are about to happen, man. That's what we do when we blow the alarm, man. And blowing the alarm is speaking out of, these, is speaking out of this Bible, man. Giving you the prophecies that's coming out of this Bible. That's the alarm. All right? That's the alarm that should automatically, instantly ding in your mind. Ding, ding. All right, or like your alarm when you're sleeping and your alarm goes off, but you instantly hop up, right? You instantly hop up and you wake up for that. But this is a spiritual alarm, all right? This is a spiritual alarm that we're holding to let you know that America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, 
All right, martial law is coming. Race riots are coming. All right, RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. All right, all those things are coming. It's going to hit this place. It's going to hit this place, man. But a lot of people tend to just party and bullshit. They're in that, they're in that what you call biggie spirit. <laughs> party and bullshit. All right, but this ain't no time for partying, man. We're not in the midst of partying. Brothers is not in the midst of partying, having this big ass glorious party, man. All right. The true living is going to come when we get the kingdom, man. The true living is going to come when our enemies fall. The true living is going to come when Yahweh Shai come back. And we know that our big brother comes back, it's over, man. When our big brother shows up on the scene, hey, it's over, man. It's through. It's done. This world is, this world is through. All right? And that's going to be beautiful. This world is through, man. And that's going to be great, man. That's going to be your pa. And the brothers is waiting on it, man. But then again, the brothers have what? Patience, man. Patience and faith. Because that's what our whole, that's what, uh, that's what our whole base is, is, uh, is set around, man. That's what the whole truth is set around is patience and faith, man. All right. My elders and my apostles been out there for 30, 35 plus years, man. 40 years almost, man, out there teaching, man. You know? Hey, that's your pa, man. 40 years? 40 years of teaching, man. There's a lot of guys who don't even make it seven years teaching, man. Okay? Don't even make it seven, because they say it's taking too long. Oh, hey, brother, hey, man, it's taking too long, man. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I, I just can't keep holding on. I can't keep holding on, man. I, my faith is dwindling. Okay? You see it in a lot of guys' eyes, man. You look into their eyes, you be like, yeah, nah, man, he ain't gonna make it, man. He ain't got it in him, man. He going through something, but he don't know how to withstand himself, man. All right? He really didn't put his trust in Yahweh while Yahweh shy, man. He spoke a good game, but he didn't, he didn't do what he said he was gonna do, man. He gonna drop the plow eventually, man. And when you drop the plow, that's it. There's no coming back for you, man. All right? So you got to continue on, man, regardless of what you may be going through, regardless of hardship, hard times, or anything that may be happening to you or in your life, man. The Lord said he's going to try you as gold in the fire, man. Try you as gold in the fire, man. He's going to purify you, man. He's going to purge you, man. All right? You're going to be put to the test on certain things, man. Brother's going to be put to the test, man. Okay? They're going to be put to the test, but it's all about their faith and how they deal with the test, man. Okay? Okay? So let's get this here, man. It says, back in Joel 2 and 1, it says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and the sound of the alarm of my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Right, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. And they're not trembling because they hear the word. The elites are, though. But the people of the people, the zombies of this world, the people who are zombified, they're not trembling. Because they think they see this place going on forever. They foresee that this place can, is going to go on forever. But the elites, they most definitely, definitely are trembling by this word. This word is scaring them. That's why they have outer bunk, outer space bunkers built. All right? Like they showed you in that movie 2012. Right, where they had this underground place where they can escape what's going to happen, man. But, hey, little, little do they know they're not going to escape. Because we're going to go and pull their ass out of those bunkers, man. We get those spiritual powers, man. Brothers, get those spiritual powers. We're going to go pull your ass down, man. Okay? We're going to pull your ass down from the heavens. We're going to pull you down from hell, which is the ground underneath. All right, where you're hiding at in those bunkers, man. And we're going to shackle you up and take you into slavery, man. Okay? We're going to shackle you up and take you into slavery. Okay? Let's 
So it says, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, right? For the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. Yeah, this thing is at hand, man. Okay? You can't say that this thing ain't at hand, man. You can't say that this place has got it. Oh, it's got to, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on forever. No, America has an expiration date. And the expiration date is when the Most High stamps it. All right, that's the expiration date. When the prophecies are fulfilled, that's the expiration date. Like you put an expiration date on food, and you know, okay, you got a few, you got a few days before it go bad. Well, that's how America has Babylon. It has an expiration date. It has a time before it's gonna go bad, meaning it's gonna be destroyed. The Most High did it to Sodom and Gomorrah. The Most High did it to Rome, ancient pagan Rome. He did it to Greece. He did it to uh, uh, the Medo Persian Empire. He did it to ancient Babylon. He did it to Egypt. Would you think he ain't gonna do it to this place? You think the Lord ain't gonna do it to this place, man? The Lord ain't biased. Look that word up if you don't know what it means. The Lord ain't some uh, 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 some power that's gonna say, you know what, nah, we're gonna, nah. This place is too wicked and has reached unto the heavens, man. Let's get that real quick. Oh, man. Oh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I'll just read this. But I want to find that scripture that reached unto the heavens. Right? But 2 Peter 3 and 7, this is a good one too. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Right? They're kept in store for prophecy. This place has been kept in store for prophecy, man. All right? That's why this place has been kept in store, to fulfill prophecy. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, kept in store, reserved unto fire. And it's reserved. Reserved unto fire. Because it has an expiration date. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And Esau is that main perdition of the ungodly men. All right? Okay? Perdition means son of destruction, man. And he is the son of destruction. All right? He destroyed the water. He destroys the food. He destroys everything he touched. The trees get cut down by what you call fellas. They come and cut trees down. That gives that breathe, that gives you oxygen off to breathe, man. This man is a devil. He puts uh, mass amount of barium oxide in the air to destroy the air to kill the people this man is truly a devil man Esau is truly a devil man and he's being revealed by the prophets and a lot of people don't see it man a lot of people's eyes are just not open man they're dead they're dead they're the walking dead they're, they're walking, they're up and alive, but they're spiritually dead. That's what I'm saying when I say the walking dead. They're spiritually dead. They have no life in them. Life meaning knowledge, truth, wisdom, understanding. They have none of that in them. All they have is this BS garbage of this world's philosophies. All right? this world pushes off tons of philosophies, man. And they start it when you're a child. Because when you're a child, you can retain things more. 
as you get older, if you, as the scriptures say, you teach a child, matter of fact, hold on. Hold on. Scriptures, Proverbs 22 and 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So what they do is they catch all the children at an early age, and they train them up with their BS philosophies. So now... So now as they continue to grow up and hit the ages of 12, which you become a man technically, all right, at the age of 12, okay? Now they start to use those philosophies that they have been taught and they move about their life in those philosophies that they have been taught, man. That's why you got to train them up. You got to train your child up with real knowledge, with the truth of the Bible, all right? The truth of the Bible, man. Okay, with the Heavenly Father and His Son's words, with Yahweh, Yahweh Shai's words. That's how you train up a child, man. And that's the way he'll depart in righteousness, man. He won't depart in wickedness, man. He'll depart in righteousness. He'll take part in righteousness, man. Okay? He'll know what's right and what's good. He'll know what's evil and what's wicked, man. I mean, what's wicked and what's good and what's righteous, man. He'll know the difference between right, uh, 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 right and wrong, really. Because they don't really know the difference between right and wrong because Esau is pushing out wrong. Wickedness, man. That's all Esau's philosophies is, is to push off wickedness, man. He has no other options because he is the son of perdition, the son of destruction. He destroys everything that's created the right way. Okay? He'll destroy everything that was created in righteousness and turn it into something completely wicked, man. And turn it into something completely wicked. Okay? Turn it into something completely wicked. All right, so back in 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra, the eighth verse again. It says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer uh, them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. So the souls of the just complain continually, man. The souls of the righteous complain continually, man. Hey, that's what we do when we come out here and we prophesy. That's what we do when we pray. We complain to the Heavenly Father. We say, man, listen, hey, man, you need to take this place out, man. This place needs to be destroyed, man. Take this, hey, how long? But we know prophecy has to be fulfilled. But we cry to the Heavenly Father and let him know, hey, man, how long, bro? You know? How long? Because there's so much going on here in this world, man. There's so much going on. So many things that are out of order, man. Completely out of order. Okay? That's why when Yahweh Shai come back, everything is going to be flipped uh, right side up, man. Okay? Everything is going to be flipped right side up. No, hold on, let me see. I wanted to get the scripture, but ah, I'll get this. I'll go back in second, Ezra. We'll continue on. <clears throat> it says, uh, And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto them, unto me, Salakia, all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Right, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. What are they being taught? BS. That's how they being led as a flock to the slaughter, man. 
They being taught garbage, man. All right, that's like when your diet is not healthy, man. What are you eating garbage all day long? They're not getting a spiritual diet. They're not getting spiritual food. Okay? They're not getting spiritual food. So their diet is all messed up. You understand? Their diet is all messed up. Okay? Because our people have no understanding. And neither do they want to understand because they'd rather just can deal with and continue in our, our wickedness, man. But anyway, let's continue on. It says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, right, meaning destruction. They led as a flock to being put to death. Slaughter is when you put something to death. That's what slaughter is, man. Is when you put that thing down, man. That thing no longer lives, man. Eventually it comes back again, though. And what I mean by that is reincarnation, which our people are, our people, according to Romans, the 11th chapter, the 26th verse, they will be back again in the kingdom. But first they have to suffer punishment here on this side. Two thirds will have to suffer serious execution or punishment on this side right here, man. By the heavenly father, man. The plagues, the death, destruction, things that are, things that are being spoken by the heavenly father in the Bible, they're gonna have to suffer those things first before they enter back into, before they enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right? The land of milk and honey. Cause that place is gonna get destroyed too as well, man. All right, that place is that place gonna get nuked. Thermal nuclear bashing over there, man. The Lord's gonna have to clean that place up before we go back in that land, man. Cause that place, that land is filthy. That land's filthy right now, man. All right. Okay. It's artificial over there, man. Fake. It's not real over there. That's not the true land of milk and honey as we know the true land of milk and honey to be, man. Which is written about in the scriptures, man. Okay? That's a land of artificial uh, artificialness, man. Fakeness, man. Okay? That's what that land is, man. That's not the true land of the... That's not our land, so, so to say, as in... Um, how can I say this? As in... A great aspect of it being good. Let's just say that. All right. Okay. As it being, okay, well, this is a, a, a great place to dwell at. No, it's not right now, man. It's not. It's destroyed. It's, it's truly destroyed. And that's why the Heavenly Father is going to destroy it. He's going to take it out. Okay. And he's going to get the heathen off our land. The heathen is going to be uh, removed from off our land. But they're going to be back in chains. <laughs> slavery. All right, slavery is going to come back in a big way, man. All right, we were slaves over here. Was we or was we not? Yeah, we was, man. We still are mentally. All right. We still are slaves over here in this land, man. You got a social security card. You got an ID. You got all those things going on with you, right? You're a slave. You're not free. True freedom is where you're able to go wherever you want. You ain't got to give nobody no damn explanation, man. That's freedom. But Esau, you got to sign paperwork, all right? You got to let this man know when you leaving. You got to get a plane ticket. You got to get a bus ticket, all right? Your car has got to be registered. Okay? You see? But in the kingdom, we're not going to... That, that ain't going to be so. Right? For us. For the Israelites. We're going to be free. We're going to do what we want to do. And we're going to run it in righteousness. By the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Ba, Shem, Yahweh, Shai, man. That's how we're going to run the kingdom. And that's going to be beautiful, man. That's going to be your power. Okay, well, let's continue on. I'm drinking this water here, brothers. Drinking this here, agua.
All right, let's continue on. Verse number 10 again. It says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, and I will not, and I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage, man. That's what the word Egypt means. It means bondage. And this is in Egypt is, is spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Revelation 11. Hold on, that's... Hold on, I think it's uh, not Revelation 11. It's lock you. Actually, I think it is 11 and 8. Oh, yeah, Revelation 11 and 8. Yep, it is. It's a lock you. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Great city is talking about America, Babylon. That's what the great city is talking about. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Sodom, you already know what sodomy is. All right? I ain't even got to explain what sodomy is. Egypt means bondage. And that's what America is. Sodom in Egypt, man. The land of bondage, man. Bondage for who? The Israelites. So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's who the bondage is. All right? Okay? Because what did Moses tell Pharaoh? He sent word from the Heavenly Father. He said, let my people go. And Pharaoh consists on saying, no, I'm not going to let your people go. I'm not going to let your people go. Your people are going to stay here with me. He'll go back and say, no. Pharaoh will say, no, I'm not letting them go. They are my possession. And every time the Lord would send Moses, Moses would come back and say, nah, it's time for you to let them go. Let my people go. All right? But Esau don't want to let us go. All right? Esau don't want to let us go. Let's go to Exodus 21 real quick. Let's go to Exodus 21. All right? Because the same predicament that Moses was in is the same predicament that we're in. So this is Exodus 21 and 16. And it reads, And he that stealeth the man and selleth him, right, Esau, you stole us and you sold us on auction blocks, right? And you still got us here in his kingdom. You still got us here. You haven't let us go. You refuse to let us go. All right? You refuse to let us go. And you say, oh, here you go. You can go back to Africa. No, we don't want to go. We ain't going back to no damn Africa, man. We ain't from there any damn way. So we ain't going back there either. All right? We ain't going back there. We're going back to the land of Israel. All right? Okay? Jerusalem. That's what we're going back to, man. Okay? That's the land we're going back to. It says, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Right? He shall surely be put to death. And, he, and we're found in his hand still. This man's going to be put to death. The Lord's going to destroy Esau. The Lord going to evaporate Esau, man. Yahweh Shai is going to come and get busy on Esau. The scriptures say, he shall, I shall not meet thee as a man. Yahweh Shai coming back as an angelic power, a power that cannot be beat, a power that's unstoppable, man. You got to remember when the, uh, when the disciples had seen Yahweh Shai leave and he went up into a chariot, right? And the angels were standing right next to the, uh, the disciples and they were saying, or the, yeah, the disciples, they were disciples before they became apostles, right? Because the word apostle means to be sent away. But they became, the angels is looking at them and saying, why is I standing there gazing up into the heavens? The same Yahweh Shah you seen leave, 
the same Yahweh Shai come back that way. You know? So he said, he so, so the angels told him, he said, listen here, the same way you see him leave, the same way he's coming back. So that's how we know the Lord is going to appear back in a chariot. Because the scriptures say, the Lord, he said, it says, uh, then he shall forevermore meet the Lord in the air. Matter of fact, let's get that so I can prove what I'm saying is correct. But we're still found in Esau's hand. All right? We're still found in Esau's hand. And he refused to let us go like Pharaoh. Because he is the modern day Pharaoh. All right? He's the modern day Pharaoh. I have another scripture to prove that. All right, let's see. I have another scripture to prove that, and then I'll go get to meet the Lord in the air. It says, uh, Oppress. Jeremiah 15 33 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And where we're oppressed at? Right here in Babylon. We're oppressed together. All right? See, our people think it's all a split. No, we're all one nation. All right? But during the time of Jeroboam and Rehoboam, we were just broken up into two different kingdoms. Southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, but we're all one nation. We are the nation of, of Yasha Allah. That's our whole nation from Judah all the way down to Issachar. We're all one nation, man. All right, with 12 tribes amongst that one nation. Okay? And we're all oppressed together. We're here in Babylon. We're oppressed together. All right? So you can't say that we wasn't oppressed together because we were oppressed together. We are. We are being, we are being oppressed. All right. Who's in the jail cells more? Who's in the jail? Who's in the uh, uh, the prison system more? Jake. So-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. You're in the prison system. That's oppression. But who sets up the crimes? Esau. He sets up the bait. That's what that's called. That's called bait. He sets up everything, bring the drugs into your neighborhood, Put the drugs into the world talking about, oh, what, the FBI, the CIA, and all that. They all behind that, man. They all got a scheme behind that making money. Damn devils. All right? The guns. And so on and so forth, man. All of that, man. Weapons of war. But Esau's weapon of war is the gun. It used to be the sword. Now it's the modern day gun. You see? That's what it is. All right, that's all it is. Okay. But let's continue to read this. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, right? The Lord of armies, the heavenly father of armies, Yahweh. It says, The children of Israel should be sons of Israel, and the, and the sons of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast, and they refused to let them go. So Esau refused to let us go, man. He refused to let us go. Okay? He refuses to let us go. All right? He may talk that, he may talk that shit about y'all. Hey, y'all can leave. Y'all can go back to uh, so-called Africa. Y'all can leave. No, he no, he don't want us to leave. Really, where we're going back is we're going back to Israel. When this is all said and done. When America's burnt down to a crisp, we're going back to Israel. That's our homeland. Alright? Africa ain't our damn homeland. Alright? We're going back to Israel. Let's get this here in Rome in Romans. About Pharaoh. I think it's in chapter nine. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 
Yeah, here it is right here. I'll start at verse 15. It says, For ye say to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the heavenly Father that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose has I raised thee up. Right, so even for Esau, the same purpose of him ruling, for prophecy's sake, is the same purpose why he raised you up. For prophecy's sake. That's why you've been raised up. You haven't been, ro you haven't been rosed up, all right, just to... Um, just to, uh, how can I say, uh, how can I say it? Mm, trying to think of how I'm going to put it. You haven't been raised up. Oh, to just think that you're going to rule forever. Yeah, let's say that. You haven't been raised up to think that you're just going to rule forever, Esau. All right? You eat a mite, you wasn't, you wasn't, that's not the purpose. The purpose of it is for a purpose, for a reason. There's a reason behind everything that the Most High does. It says, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, the modern day Pharaoh is Esau. All right? It says, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that, I, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So the heavenly father's name and his son, Yahweh Shai, is going to be declared throughout all the earth again when this great destruction comes. And the great destruction is going to be by thermonuclear missiles, by the chariot fire, Right, Yahushua's return to the deliverance of the elect. All right, that's gonna be that's gonna be talked about forever in the kingdom, man. Just like when just like when we took out of Egypt, just like when we left out of Egypt, right? That was talked about forever, man. That's that's talked about forever, and so this this deliverance this time is gonna be talked about forever as well, man. Okay, it's gonna be talked about forever as well. All right. It says um, that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden it. Thou, uh, thou will say uh, then unto me, why doeth he yet fall, uh, find fault for who have resisted his will? It says, nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against the heavenly father? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why has thy made uh, me thus? Right, why has thy made me thus? So nobody's going to reply against the Heavenly Father. Nobody have an answer to come up against the Heavenly Father, man. Now you got boneheads out here that want to say what they want to say. Or, or, okay, well this is this and I believe in this and I believe in that. But all that shit don't mean nothing to the Heavenly Father. All that shit means nothing to the Heavenly Father. Nothing, not a word. We're talking about a power who destroyed a, 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 a whole damn earth, man. He flooded a whole earth and, and saved eight souls out of it, man. And they have the proof. Esau got the proof. He found Noah's Ark. He found the Ark. Okay? He found the Ark, man. Because the scripture said that the Ark landed in Mount Arad, man. This man found it. So you mean to tell me that this book is not the truest book on the planet? But then our people yet again turn around and say that's written by Esau. That's Esau book. But Esau destruction is written in this book. That's why the banking, that's why the banking families, the elites, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Ivanheimers, DuPonts, and the Gettys, that's why they shaking in their boots. All right? This is a spiritual thing, man. You got to get on a high level to get on this one, baby. This is a spiritual thing. Okay? And Esau know that this is a spiritual thing. Matter of fact, let's take it from the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Let's show you how spiritual this thing is. Let's take it all the way back. Okay? Because the word Genesis means beginning. So let's take it back to Genesis. This man is fighting over a blessing. This man is mad about a blessing that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have obtained. All right? That we have obtained. The word Yaiqua means supplanter. Jacob. 
The word Esau means red or Adawan, a Shashua, a wasted away is he. There's only one people on this earth that are red, man. I don't even have to say it. Esau. You already know. So let's take it back to the beginning. All right. Here it is, right here. All right, this is Genesis chapter 25 and verse number 23. Actually, let's start at verse number 21. It says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, for his wife because she was bearing, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. Yeah, there was a there was a battle going on. There was a battle going on. It was they was pretty much jockeying for power, jockeying for position in the womb. Just like just like today. How Esau and Jacob look at each other. We look at each other like, man, get out of here. We're stronger than them. We're a stronger nation than they are. They're not stronger than us. They go kill themselves automatically. We just deal with the problems that we have. All right? We put in situations that nobody can get out of those situations, man. And we have to deal with those situations. And you can't tell me that I'm wrong. Because you can't tell me that I'm wrong because I am right. Because we have to deal with those situations because we are a stronger nation, man. Esau is not a stronger nation. The Edomites are not strong. They're weak. Spiritually, mentally, physically. Okay? And the only way I say they will not be unless that, is, unless that Edomite is actually a Jake. But let's continue on. It says, if he be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Right, two manner of people. Two different mannerisms, man. Two different mannerisms. Okay. Esau and Jacob. Aishashua, wasted away is he. And Yaiqua, Jacob. Okay. It says, Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right, so Esau know that he's going to serve us, man. The elder shall serve the younger. He's going to serve us, man. Uh, and we're going to require your service real soon, Esau. Your services is being required. Okay? Because the Heavenly Father says so. All right? And his son, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shah, your services is going to be required once this kingdom is taken down. And that requirement is going to be you exterminated after a thousand years of slavery. Okay? All right? That's going to be that requirement. Okay? According to Obadiah, the only chapter in, that, in the Bible speaks about the Edomites being done away with after their servitude, their slavery, after, after being in subjugation for a thousand years. Because the scriptures say reconvince, and it says double, it says reward them double. So we're going to reward them double the punishment that they have reward us, but in righteousness though. We're going to do it the right, we're going to do it in the right way. We're going to show you how to really, really get busy. All right? We're not going to do it like you did it, Esau. We're going to show you how to really get busy. Okay? Verse 24, And when her days to be fulfilled, uh, delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red. That's Esau. All over like a hairy garment. Now, was he hairy when he came out? No. He was red. All over like a hairy garment. That's a metaphor. So it means that this man was fully red when he came out. He had a whole red body, man. Okay? A lot of people read that. They always say, oh, Esau was hairy when he came out? No. He was just red all over his body like a hairy garment. Because a hairy garment just has uh, hair all over it. But he was red like a hairy garment. That's a metaphor. Like. That's comparing something to something. Okay? 
it says, and they and they called his name Esau. After and after that came his brother out. Why did it mention his color? Because he was normal. Jacob was normal then. So they didn't need to mention his color. That's how you put this whole thing together. Reincarnation. Cain and Abel. Cain couldn't till the earth. And he was cursed. But what was he cursed with? No pigmentation. No melanin. Because everybody on the earth looked like Look, uh, look, was uh, had some type of color to them, some melanin to them. All right, on the earth they had melanin to them. Okay, but this man is the only man on the earth that don't have any melanin to him. That's why he takes sunscreen and he puts uh, and he puts sunscreen on to make them darker. Inside that sunscreen is what you call like uh, darkness to darken up your skin, to protect you from the sun rays. All right. Where I can go out and I can stand in the sun all day long and I just get darker because the melanin is so rich in my in my skin. Okay? But see, in this world, they look at that as a bad thing. But actually, no, that's a great thing to have melanin in your skin. It's a beautiful thing. All right? You ever heard the saying, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice? Or hey, the dark of the skin. The sweeter it is for you to be able to stand out in the sun all day. Okay? Because the sun rays don't hurt you. All right, so let's read this here. This is the part I want to truly get to. It says, and after that came out, uh, came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's hill. Right, so he was, so he grabbed Esau. He said, I ain't do what you get. I ain't do what you get, man. You ain't done. We're not done here. All right? That's like somebody, when you walk away and they come and grab your shoulder and say, man, we're not done here yet, man. I'm not, fin I'm not finished talking to you. You gonna just turn your back? No, I'm not finished talking to you, man. All right? We're not through yet. That's how Esau, that's how uh, Jacob did Esau. He grabbed his hill, which is symbolic for taking him out of power. Right? Which is symbolic for taking him out of power. Like, ah. Come here, you you done, you through already. It's just a matter of time. And I'm going to go to another scripture to back that up. It's just a matter of time that you be taken out of power. Okay? Because the Lord's going to set it up, right? To where eventually you're going to come into power, but I'm going to take over. Okay? I'm going to take over for good, forever, eternal. Okay? You've had your chances. You were the Greeks, Romans, and now you're the Americans. Okay? Three strikes, you're out. All right? And it's all because of our disobedience. That's why we're not put, that's why we haven't been put in power, but the Lord plays the movie out the way he wants to play the movie out. Because at the end of the day, the Israelites win the script. We win the title, so to speak. All right, we win the battle regardless of whether or whether it may go, how it may go. We win regardless. The Lord got us winning regardless. So we win in either way. All right. It says, and after that came his brother out and his hell and he and his hand took hold on Esau's hill and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. All right. So that was the point on that, man. And the birthright. Matter of fact, let's just jump down to the birthright real quick and then we'll get into it. And let's let's read some characteristics too. It says, And Isaac was three score years uh years old when she bare them, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Meaning he just liked to chill. And Isaac loved Esau. Because he did eat of his venison, that's deer. All right? And hey, listen, they, Esau knows that too. Okay? Esau know what venison is. That's deer, man. All right? Okay? It says, but Rebecca loved Jacob. 
because uh, it says, uh, verse 29, it says, And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field and was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Right, he didn't want to wait for it to be done. Esau didn't want to wait for the food to be done. He wanted a raw meal, man. That's why they call him the red. This is, this is where he get his name, and this is why they're going to say, watch this. It says, I am faint, therefore his name was called Edom. Right, meaning red. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Sell this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am, the, I am at the point to die. So he, he was so famished that he said, I'm at the point I'm going to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? So pretty much he disrespected the birthright anyway. The Lord put the spirit on him anyway to give the birthright up anyway. It was all spiritual. But then he want to turn around and say that we stole the birthright. He said, isn't yet right that his name Jacob means supplanter? <laughs> he ain't supplanted your ass. Because the spirit of the Lord made it happen. To supplant your ass. Okay. It says, it says, and Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob uh, gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. See, so he despised the birthright. But he's now damn mad about it because he wished he had it because we're going to have eternal life. That's why Esau is trying to cre create eternal life here on this earth by putting himself up and, and setting up a, what you call the new world order, which he tried that numerous times before. The Tower of Babel. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. He tried that. He tried that numerous times, man. All right. Antiochus Epiphanes, the fourth. He tried that. He said everyone should be given a uh, 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 follow after these laws only and. This this so-called religion only and all of these things like that. Everybody had to be up under one banner. That's like they're trying to do here today. The elites are trying to do the same thing that they were trying to do back then. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun, man. Okay? Nothing new under the sun. All right? nothing new under the sun so like i said i had that scripture that i wanted to back up with that so this second ezra chapter six and verse number six. let's start at six it says then did i consider these things and they all were made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other then answered i and said what shall be the parting asunder of times or when shall the end of the first or when shall be the end of the first in the beginning of it that, that of it that followeth. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac and Jacob and Esau, and Esau were born of him Jacob held, uh, Jacob's hand held the hill, first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, right? For Esau is the end of the age of rulership, right? Which is right here. This is the end of his age, his rulership. Because he's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. Yahweh is going to return. I can't tell you when he's going to return, but the prophecies and things stated, right? The times of wonders and signs, all of those things stated. So I can't give you no time, date, and I won't give you one. But all I know is the signs, the times, and the wonders, and all those things are happening before you. Okay? All those things are going on before you now. All right? So just know that. All right? So it says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right, for Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. All right? So we're next to rule and our rulership is forever, man. That's why the scripture says this here. Let me get second Peter. Let's 
spirit got me flying everywhere. You know, from destruction to the blessing, what, a, what the blessing is about, and why, and, why, and why is this thing going on the way it's going on? Because this thing is all about the blessing. Second Peter 3. Second Peter 3 and verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It says, but the day of the Lord, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I and mean, a thief ain't going to tell you when he's going to show up. He is going to handle his business and do what he got to do. It says, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That says ICBM missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles. It says, in the elements, right? Because everything is made with elements. The Lord put together the elements. All right. Okay elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that therein shall be burned up so all the works of this place is going to be burned up all the wicked works that is is going to be burned up man all right because ain't number no wicked works here on this earth ain't no righteous works you got idol worshiping all right idol worshiping okay saintness bruteness all right, you got all that shit on here on this earth, man. All of that, man. Atheists. The Lord is going to put all that shit to sleep, man. Okay? We're going to put all that to sleep. Okay? It says, shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works there uh, that are therein shall be burned up. Now, Esau, it don't matter if Esau is atheist because he hates the Lord anyway. But two-thirds of our people, a lot of two-thirds of our people are atheists, man. And they're going to get destroyed. Okay? They're going to get the evaporation, uh, 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 the evaporation period, man. Which is the earth, which is the, <laughs> the Lord frying this place, man. The earth is going to be intact, but America's going to be destroyed. All right? The earth is going to abide forever, but America's going to be wiped off the face of it. <laughs> okay? Just so you understand, man. You understand what's being said. All right? Matter of fact, I'll prove that to you, too. Just so you just so you understand, man, what I'm saying. Abide. Let me see if I can find it. If I if I can't find it then I think it's somewhere in Proverbs. Either Proverbs or Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes, which I think Ecclesiastes might be it. I can't find it right now, but 
We know that I think it might be in I eh, maybe Isaiah. Not sure, but I know it's in there. But anyway, we know the earth is gonna abide forever. America's gonna be destroyed off the face of it. Alright? Just so you understand, man. Let's get back to the second Peter. I can't find the scripture right now. It says seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the of the heavenly father, Yahweh Yahweh Shai. It says, We're in the heavens, right? This heavens, this rulership, okay, of Esau, all right, will be destroyed. Okay. It says, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens, right? A new earth, kinos refreshed, or new, uh, a new heavens is talking about new rulership, or new age, right? And a new earth is kinos, meaning refreshment. It says, wherein dwelleth righteousness, because the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be governing the kingdom of heaven. All right? We're going to be governing the kingdom of heaven by the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? Nothing's going to be out of order. Okay? We're going to be the law. Okay? Okay? It's like that movie. What did he say? He said, I am the law. <laughs> That's how we're going to be in the kingdom. <laughs> okay? You got to have a little fun with this sometimes, brothers. It says, we're for beloved... It says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay. So, hey, man, listen, man, we're going to have a, a beautiful rulership, man. It's going to be a most, uh, one of the most powerful rulerships ever, man. And forever, too. Okay. There's not one thing that's going to be out of order in the kingdom, man. Because we're going to have it in sub, we're going to have it in subjugation. Right, we're gonna have it in check. Everything is gonna be in check. Nothing is gonna go. Uh, nothing's gonna get out of order in the kingdom. We're gonna have that joint in check, man. All right. That's like when you checkmate somebody in chess. Checkmate. That's how we gonna have it in the kingdom. We go. We checkmate in everything. All right. Everything gets checkmated by the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Give me a drink of water here. It's hot out here. It's a beautiful day out here, though. Well, yeah, yeah, brothers. Beautiful day out here. Let's get back in the second. That's just 15, though. Uh, verse number 11, it says, uh, But I will bring them with a the mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. So the Lord's going to destroy all this land. There's nothing that's going to be left here, man. All right? Okay? Wild desert creatures, man. Desert creatures, as it tells you in the book of Revelation. All right? And Isaiah 34. All right. It says, uh, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that the Most High, the Heavenly Father, shall bring upon it. Then they shall till the ground and shall mourn, for the seed shall fail through the blasting of, in hell and with a fearful consolation, woe to the world and, and, and them that dwell therein. And for the sword and their destruction draweth not. That sword and their destruction is talking about an ICBM missile. Right, ICBM missile, man. That's that sword and destruction, man. That's drawing nigh. Okay? That's what's going to happen, man. It says, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. Right, that's race riots, man. There's going to be a lot of race riots here on this place, man. See, people think everything is in good case, everybody is good. But what did Yahweh Shai say in Matthew, the 24th chapter? Let's go to it. Let's go to Matthew 24th chapter. We're going to hold that off in 2nd Ezra. Let's go to Matthew 24th chapter. 
Because Matthew 24th chapter, that, hey, that been coming out a lot, my brothers, lately, man. This is the time that we in, Matthew 24th chapter. And uh, I'll read at verse 12. Actually, no, I'll start at verse... Uh, Verse 6, I'll start at. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over here real quick. And it says... Uh, Verse 10, it says, And there shall many that be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And it says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And we see a lot of false prophets out here. There's a lot of them, man. There's a lot of them. And you can tell who's not speaking the oracles of the Heavenly Father. You can tell by how their demeanor is. All right? You can tell by what they teach and how they're teaching it. And are they going into words? Are they studying? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? Are they finding out what these words mean? What that word mean? You can tell who's a deceiving uh, prophet, man. Just by the way he speaks. Just by the way he teaches. That's how you can tell of a deceiving prophet. If he's teaching out of the Bible and he's teaching the things out of the Bible correctly. Okay? It says, And many false prophets shall arise shall rise and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's what I want. See, the love of many shall wax cold. All right? The love of many is going to wax cold. People that used to be real cool with you or tight with you, when the famine hits, niggas ain't, motherfuckers ain't going to be tight with you no more, man. They're going to try to get your goods, man. All right? A famine hits, they starving, they got kids that starving, they coming for your house. They coming for you. Okay? That's what's going to happen, man. You're going to see. You watch and you see what's going to happen out here in these times, man. All right? You watch and you see. And devil. It says, one people shall stand and fight up and fight against another and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition, meaning rebelliousness, among men and invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Right, complete lockdown. All right? They're going to lock that thing down. Like, um, like New York, for an example. New York ain't nothing but a big island. All right. Once they lock down the tunnels, the bridges, there's no way in. There's no way out. You just stuck on that island, man. OK, you stuck on that island, California. You're just out by somewhere in the ocean. You stuck. You can't go nowhere. All right. And there's certain places that you can't go nowhere, man. But that that being the main New York being the main, though, you can't go nowhere. If you stuck when you in the when they close off those bridges and tunnels. Oh, it's over for you. You're surrounded by nothing but water. Okay? It says, For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and many shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for the great tribulation. Great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. That's that great tribulation. Daniel 12 chapter speaks about... Uh, Jacob's trouble, man. All right? Jacob's trouble. Okay? There's going to be a whole lot going on out here, man. A whole lot. And a lot of people ain't going to be able to deal with it, man. They're not going to be able to deal with it. Not going to be able to deal with their stomach touching their back. Not being able to have a meal. Concentration camps. Martial law. Gerga troops. All right? Then they're going to force the RFID microchip on them. All right? Which they're doing that in plain sight right now, man. They're doing that right now in plain sight in front of people's faces, man. Because they're pushing off this Vex, the V. All right? They're pushing that off heavy, man. And there's a reason why they're pushing that off heavy, depopulation. 
okay? Depopulation. That's why they pushing that off, man. According to their Georgia Guide songs, which is written, keep the population under 500 million people, all right, which is their so-called laws, statutes of how they feel they want to govern the earth, making themselves eternal, making them try to make themselves eternal, uh, eternal kings on the earth, so to speak. Everlasting life, so to speak. Okay. You see? So this man wants that this man wants eternal life here in this rulership. Because he knows when we get the when we get the kingdom, because he's trying to, how can I say it? He's trying to live out the blessing here on earth. He's trying to live out the blessing that we have obtained here on earth, but the Most High got him in a trick bag because the Most High is only using him for prophecy. <laughs> the Most High is only using him to fulfill prophecy. That's all he's using Esau for. Esau is being used. That's like when you, you when you take a shower, you use a uh, use a towel, and you continue to keep using that towel. That's how the Most High is using Esau, using him up until until the prophecies are fulfilled. He's no longer needed. Slavery under the nation of Israel, destruction, slavery, and then destruction again in the kingdom. For him, a thousand years worth of slavery, then destruction. <laughs> so it's a two-edged sword on Esau. Esau getting hit with a two-edged sword. Swing, swing, like that. That's how he's getting hit. The double-sided joint. All right? So Esau, you got no wins in Mikasa. Okay? You got no wins in the house of the Heavenly Father. Everything is straight L's. All right? Everything is straight L's. Okay, so let's get let's end it up with here in Revelation, man. Let's end it off here in Revelation, man. Why not? Okay, they ain't gonna, Esau ain't gonna stop us from bringing out this scripture, man. All right, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna stop us from bringing this scripture out, man. What's wrong with you? Care about what you say, man? You gonna stop us from bringing out Revelation the thirteenth chapter, man? Or talking about the mark of the beast, man? It's a part of prophecy, man. Out of here. Okay, it says, um, let's start here in Revelation, Revelation, the third chapter, let's see, let's see where I want to start, let's get the third chapter. Third chapter, third chapter, Revelation 3 and 9 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. What's the hour of temptation? The mark of the beast. That's the hour of temptation. It says, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right, to dwell, that dwell upon the earth, to try them that dwell upon the earth. All the people, man, they're going to get tried. They're going to get tried with what? That mark, the karagma, the grain of rice. Okay? That's what they're going to get tried with, man. Okay? It says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, right? Hold this knowledge. Hold this knowledge dear unto you. Okay? Which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Okay? That no man take thy crown. It says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar. A pillar of something high, man something big okay it says in a temple of my power of the heavenly father and he shall go no more out no more out and i will write upon him the name of my of my power the heavenly father and the name of thy city of the heavenly father which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from the heavenly father and i will write it upon him my new name it says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so let's go here to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Let's go and let's do it. Revelation 13 and 15. All right, let's start there. Revelation 13 and 15. It says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast 
that the image of the beast should both speak, right? His legislation, his laws, like the things that he writing, okay? Passing it through the government, all right? Through the Senate and all that, man, okay? All right? Those are the things that he's passing off, legislation. Okay, this, we're going to put this in here. They got to do this. They got to follow this. They had, they had a lot of things coming out doing this so-called CV. You know what I'm talking about, brothers. Brothers know what I'm talking about when I say CV. Okay? The CV. Okay, they were passing off things, man. Doing that. Doing that while the thing was going on. It's a lot of behind the scenes things behind that, man. All right? A lot of behind the scenes things behind that. But we're not going to speak on that. We're going we're gonna to let that play its course. Okay? Because it's, play, it's playing out its course. It says, and, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many of us will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right. Concentration camps. Martial law. All right. Weeding those ones out who are upon the red list, the blue, uh, the red list, blue list. All right. Those who are on the yellow list. Hey, you can't stay because you're obedient, I guess, so-called, so to speak. Okay. It says, verse 16, it says, And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Right, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That's that chip. That's that chip. Okay? What's that chip? The new currency. Because they're going to do away with that dollar bill. And those coins, all that's going to be done away with, man. They're going to do away with that. As they gave you an example, when CV came around, how the, how the banks had it, how the banks had no money in them. You got to come and get this amount of amount, much amount of money. That's what the banks was doing. <laughs> Straight up. You see certain things like that because our eyes are open. It says, and he calls with all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, right? To receive a mark in their right hand, in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to do nothing out here with that cash that you hold in your pocket anymore because now the new currency or the new way of AI technology, artificial intelligence. Right, what's go what's co alongs with this, the internet of things is all wrapped into one thing. Alright, all wrapped into one thing. But I'll continue on. It says it says the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that haveth understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Right, six six six, man. Alright. The mark of the beast, so, you know, hey, so brothers, listen here, man. You got to keep your faith together. You got to stay strong, you know, prayer, fast as much as possible as you can, man. Because we're in the latter days, man. The last time, we're in the latter days, this place is going to end. The Most High is going to take this place out. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai going to just ob obliterate this place, all right? And uh, eventually, you know, they're going to deliver the elect, and we going home, baby. And we taking all, and we taking the other nations with us in slavery, especially Esau. We taking him in chains, and the other nations are coming with him as well. I don't think we forgot about you, but Esau, we really gonna put a foot in your ass, man. We really gonna put a foot in your ass. So you better enjoy your kingdom now, because your kingdom is soon about to come to zilch, an end. You have an event, you have an uh, expiration date on your kingdom, Esau. And hey, with that, brothers, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Arakah Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone to rule well. Peace and blessings and citation to the hopeful elect, the Bayath, Dawadah, the house of David. Shalom and Abad Babal. Death and destruction to this place.